Our next guest says not everyone should buy long-term care insurance. He's Tim Ma Bauer, Maurer, financial advisor uh, with Financial Consult. Sorry for that mispronunciation. Tim, um, who shouldn't get long-term health care insurance? Well, I'll tell you, there's a spectrum of folks all over the board where if you have less than, let's say, $200,000, $250,000 of total assets, the chances are very good that the premiums that you would lay out for long-term care insurance would be cost prohibitive relative to the risk that you're actually shielding your assets from because you don't have enough assets. If you end up in a long-term care situation with less than $200,000 of assets, you're likely going to go through those assets in a pretty short period of time, and then Medicaid would, would step in to help you with that. Now, if you have over $2 million worth of assets, you may consider self-insuring your long-term care needs. It's still possible that you could consider doing long-term care insurance as a business transaction because of the potential probability, but everybody in the middle there, and that's a vast middle, should be considering some form of long-term care plan and possibly to include long-term care insurance. So so let's ask the question for those who are in that big, vast middle. At what age should I consider buying it, beginning to pay for it, and am I guaranteed to qualify for it, or can certain companies exclude me based on previous medical conditions or family history? The age that I recommend is in your 50s, as we've mentioned before. One of the things that you should note is from age 50 to 55, that's one age band. From age 55 to 60, that's another age band. Each of those are five years long for most insurance companies. But once you hit age 60, each successive year, they're going to increase premiums. So that's definitely something to consider. Also, because at that stage of the game, you likely don't have the types of pre-existing conditions that would rule you out. But there certainly are pre-existing conditions that would do so. As we saw with Phyllis, rheumatoid arthritis is one of the things that really scares long-term care insurers. If someone happened to have heart disease uh, in their mm -hmm. genetic background, they're not likely to care as much about that because, well, let's face it, if somebody has heart disease, they're likely to go in a moment, not spend a long period of time with long-term care. Tim, we have just a minute left. I wonder if you can go answer this question. You know, we hear so many stories of people who do get uh, this long-term uh, care insurance. They pay huge premiums, but when they need the coverage, they're denied because for some reason that service isn't covered. Can you give us some tips on how to shop for the best policy? It's very, very important to take a close look at the policy because each policy is written differently. And that's one of the things that people have been burned by. I suggest you only get a policy that will allow 100% of your benefit to be home health care. Then take a specific look at how many activities of daily living are required for you to get your long-term care benefit. In that case, you'll want to take a look at the insurer to actually see their claims payment history to make sure that they are paying up. And you also want to take a very close look at whether or not they have been increasing the premiums for existing policy holders. Ideally, you'd be with an insurer who has not. Big topic. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you. Tim Maurer, financial advisor with Financial Consulate.